morning in the name of jesus christ our precious lord and savior you are once again with abigail Minyai and what an honor it is for me to be with you guys today um today i want to switch things up just a little bit and i want to do things differently i have a question and here is my question if you were to find yourself at heaven's gate at heaven's door and they asked you why should we let you in what would you say if you found yourself at heaven's gate, at heaven's door, and they asked you a question and they said, Abigail, why should I let you in today? What would your answer be? This is a question that I have commonly asked and I want to shock you with the answers that I've received. Many people have said, well, I go to church on Sundays. You know, I give my tithe. I'm a good person. I do what I need to do. And that is what I would say if I needed to enter heaven. Now, listen to this. I want to give you an answer that will help you to understand what I want to talk to you about today. All right. Now, obviously, the answers that I've given you are not correct. That is good and great, but it's not what gets you into heaven. Now, the answer should be that someone else paid the price for me. Someone else did something that gives me access. I didn't have to do anything. And that leads to our understanding of what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Now, when we get to heaven... And the question is asked, why should I let you in? You say, because Jesus Christ paid the price. His blood paid the price that I owed. The debt that I had and I couldn't afford to pay, Jesus Christ paid that for me. So I don't have to pay anything anymore. The ticket has already been bought. I'm just here to gain access. Now, this is something that is very sadly not understood in the Christian community. Old believers, recent believers, we don't really understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross for us. And that is where we now talk about the root of our salvation. So today is basically Salvation Sunday. Today we are talking about understanding our salvation so that we know and understand it fully. Now listen to this. For all of you who thought that your works and you thought that your, uh, your kindness, your good deeds is what qualifies you to enter heaven. I want you to understand something. The word of God says that once a man be in Christ, he's a new creation, right? He's a new creation because the Holy Spirit comes into you and you begin to bear fruits of the spirit. The word of God is very clear. It says fruits of the spirit to distinguish that there are other fruits that can be born, but they are not born from the spirit of God. We've got so many people in the streets that are doing many chivalrous acts. They're doing good deeds. They are loving people. They are kind. They're they are all of these things. But it's the fruits that we are seeing that make us to believe that the root of the tree, that the source of these fruits is Jesus Christ. Right, because this is what we expect to see from people who are Christians, but that is not true. People act good on the outside, but their hearts inside are not transformed, the hearts inside are not changed. They say they are Christians, and yes, they are kind and they smile and they say the right things, they keep the correct posture, but their hearts are not true, pure, and holy. That is why Jesus Christ and the word of God says, I do not look as man looks and I do not see as man sees. We look on the outer man and on the outer things because those are things I can pretend. I can smile with you today and you could say, oh, what a nice girl. She's always smiling. She seems always happy. She doesn't seem troublesome. Whereas in my heart, I am saying rivaling things, angry things, negative things, speaking against what my outer man is portraying. That's why the word of God encourages us to be transformed from the inside out and not from the outside in. Therefore, true salvation is not outward in, it's inward outward. I don't even know if you understand what I'm saying. So a lot of people Think that it's good to show the fruits. It doesn't matter where the fruits come from, but as long as I'm good, as long as I'm kind, as long as I help people, and as long as many people like me, then I'm on the right path. <laughs> There's a danger to that. The word of God talks about the two ways of life. And I love that it says two ways of life. Thus suggesting that both these ways lead to life. 
But when you read the actual scripture, it then contradicts that topic because then it's not both ways that lead to life. It's only one way that leads to life. Now listen to this. There is a thin road, narrow road, difficult path, crooked, filled with challenges, and there are not many people on it. Then there's a wide road filled with so many people, it's smooth sailing and everyone is there and they're happy and they're jolly. And these two ways both seem like they are going to heaven. Now, what is the differing factor? One, it's works and one is purely by what Jesus Christ did on the cross. Salvation through Jesus Christ and salvation through deeds, salvation through works. Now, salvation through deeds is on the wide road, and that renders if and it renders the thing that Jesus Christ did on the cross null and void. It renders it non effective because if you and I can enter heaven just by being good, you know, but if we're on the narrow road, we understand that by ourselves there is nothing that we could have done, there is nothing that we could do that could get us access into heaven. It's purely by Jesus Christ alone, it's purely by his blood alone. For to live is Christ, to die is gain. We then understand the beautiful exchange that took place on the cross. We then understand what it is that God or Jesus Christ actually sacrificed for us. See, the word of God says that we are sinners. It says all have sinned, all fall short of the glory of God. And if you read from Genesis, from the time when God was wiping out humanity with the flood, he explains that the nature of man, the nature of man's heart is naturally sinful. It's naturally evil. We are naturally evil. We are naturally sinful, meaning that there is nothing good that comes from us. Our hearts are naturally evil. But... When you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, you take off that sinful nature and you put it on him and he gives you. That's why it's called the beautiful exchange. He exchanges your sin. He exchanges your sinful nature for his righteousness. He exchanges it for his purity and his innocence. So he takes up. That's why we say he carried the weight of the world. He carried the sins of the world. He took upon himself my sins and your sins. All the sins that we had done before all the sins we are committing now and all the sins we're still going to commit he took upon himself he carried the weight he prayed the price for me and for you and what did he give us in exchange for our sin his innocence his purity that's why we say that the blood of jesus christ it washes whiter than the snow meaning that he washed us with his blood and he took upon himself the weight that's why when he was on the cross he said oh father why is it that you have forsaken me because light and darkness cannot be in the same place the spirit of god cannot be and coexist and be in the same place with sin that is why he took upon himself to do what nobody was willing to do to sacrifice his life and his innocence to pay for me and for you so he bought you and me the ticket that is the biggest biggest thing that is the biggest factor that we need to understand what jesus christ has done for us he died on the cross and in his death he paid the price for you and for me so am I saying that it's not good to have a kind heart, to be good to people, to be loved by people? No. What I'm saying is that that character, those attributes need to be sourced from the correct source. People do it, but they're doing it out of pretense. It's not coming from their hearts. Their hearts are still evil. Their hearts and their thoughts are still wicked. They walk about the streets doing good deeds in the sight of men so that people can say they are good, they are holy. But in the secret place in their hearts, they are not truly born again. They have not repented and their hearts are still naturally sinful and the intention of their actions is to gain <laughs> it's to it's, <laughs> it's to fool people to put a blind to to make people believe that they are one way when they are not that way. But listen to this.
Jesus Christ says, my people die. They perish for lack of knowledge. And the knowledge that they lack is that I am not looking at the outward man. I am looking at your inward man. So if you become born again and you accept the Holy Spirit into your life, all the sins that you love to commit, you no longer love. Because where light is, darkness cannot be. And as the light of the word of God, my God, as the light of the spirit of God within you begins to illuminate through you, then it begins to chase out the darkness. Then you begin to bear the fruits of the spirit. And then you begin to act and live and walk in a different manner because your inner man has been changed, which is the true person. Remember the physical person. This is just a tent. It's going to die. It's going to pass away. That's why God is not interested about the outside. He's interested about the inside. That is true salvation, to be truly born again on the inside. Many of us do things for the sake of what people will say. We do things for the sake of what people see. But God is saying today, that is not true repentance. You have not truly repented. All you are doing is putting out a show. That is why we say that the best actors are not in soapies and dramas and movies. The best actors are the people we live and walk with on a daily basis because all we do do is pretend we smile with people we don't really want to smile with we talk with people we don't really want to talk with and we're doing this because why we want the approval of society but in your heart you are re you are not born again in your heart you are still naturally evil your thoughts are evil. Your intentions are evil. Let me explain what Jesus Christ did. Before Jesus Christ came, we were under law. You know the Ten Commandments that used to say, you shall love your neighbor. You shall, ah, the, the, you shall have no other God besides those Ten Commandments. When Jesus Christ came, he fulfilled them and he took us out of the law. And what did he do? He put us under faith. Which for many people feels like, oh, this is so much better. But it's actually worse. Because in the Ten Commandments, when you were under law, it would say, <laughs> it would say that you, if you commit adultery, you have sinned. But with faith, it says, if you even lust after someone, if you think about it, you have already done it. Why? Because the intention to do it was already born in your heart. Meaning that your spiritual person is what God cares about. God cares about what is in your heart. Not what you are doing on the outside. We are quick to pretend, to look good, to dress good, to put on the appearance that is necessary. But God is not impressed by such. God is impressed by your spiritual man. That's why we are talking about going back to understanding salvation and what salvation really is and what salvation is really about. Because we've got it all wrong. The world says if you can be good, if you can be kind, if you can smile with people, if you can give, listen, God says that your left hand must not know what your right hand is doing. Your right hand must not know what your left hand is doing. So when you give, this hand must not be informed, but we do it in the eyes of men. We make a public spectacle. We, we, we put it out there for everyone to know, hey, I have done this. I have done this. We make a drum. We make a noise. We want to bring the attention to ourselves. But that's not what God has called us to do. How is it that you are born again in the eyes of your neighbors? Why is it that you seek the approval of those around you when you are not being real with yourself? And God says in the word of God that on that faithful day, many will say, God, I served you. I did this and this in your name. I was always on time on Sunday. I was never late. I always dressed well. I always had offering money with me. I always gave my tithe. And God will say, go back to where you worked for because I don't know you. My kingdom was never in you because my kingdom does not change the outer man. It starts the transformation on the inside inside therefore your heart is transformed therefore as your spirit is being transformed as my spirit is in you then you become a different person you don't become a different person because you're trying to impress people you don't start by changing the outsides how do you drop a tree by cutting off the branches when you have not plugged out the roots 
This is what God is saying today. He says, I want you to understand what true salvation is. I want you to understand what true salvation entails. The churches are full, but my kingdom is empty. Because all of you are living in the sight of people. You are trying so much to show these fruits. Because you read in my word that the fruits of the spirit are kindness. Now you try your hardest to be kind. Long suffering. Now you try to, to endure so long suffering. But you are not supposed to be doing it with your own strength. With your own might. For the wrong purpose. I will change you to become like that. As you read the word of God. Your mind will be transformed. As I impart my spirit into you. That transformation. That illumination. My glory begins to be seen in and through you, but not the other way around. You've got it the wrong way around and it's not right. That's why people are not changing. Now there is a saying that says that a leopard never changes its spots. Well, guess what? The spots of a leopard are on the outside. Why are you so concerned about transforming the spots on the outside, whereas the inner persona has not changed? Would it rather give you peace? To see a leopard without any spots, but inside it is still the same leopard? Or would you rather have that the leopard be changed on the inside that although it has those spots, it has changed. It's a new creation. It's a new man. All things would have passed away. God is saying you say you are saved. You say you are born again. You say you've, you have accepted me, but you have not accepted me with your heart. You have accepted me with your lips. I am only on your lips. I have never been inside your heart. I don't even know what it looks like in your heart. That's why you still are the way that you are today. Coming to church means nothing when your spirit man has not been transformed. Putting on appearance means nothing. You can donate millions and thousands of rands. It will not do anything to me if your spirit is still in darkness. Because then it means that you don't belong to me. Then it means that my kingdom is not in you. Which means that I cannot be your king. Salvation, true salvation. We need to understand what Jesus Christ did on the cross because our Christianity, our belief, everything we stand for is sourced and founded on what Jesus did on the cross. And we cannot downplay it. We cannot ignore it. We can't talk about everything else and not talk about it because everything starts from what Jesus did on that cross. Everything starts with that exchange that happened. I, 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 I today can enter heaven. I, I, I today have access to speak directly to this God because someone paid the ticket. Someone paid the price for me. And today I have that access. Today I am able to talk to this God. Today he lives with me. He walks with me because I understand. I, 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 I understand what he did on that day. I understand what Jesus Christ did. And I accept it. And I embrace it. And I am not ashamed to talk about it. That is true salvation. That is why the word of God says. That your mind shall be transformed. As you read the word of God, it means that your mind is not transformed the day you say the prayer, that you, your mind is not transformed the day you say I'm a child of God. There is still a transformation, pro ah, there's still a transformation process that you need to go through. There is still a journey that you need to walk. You are still on the wide road, but God is trying to get you on the narrow road where it does not matter what you have done because your works are not what going to save you. Faith in Jesus Christ alone. The word of God says that Jesus Christ is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one can go to the Father except through him. Now who are you to think that? You can have everything else and access the heavens even though you don't have the key. You don't have the way. You don't have the life with this Jesus Christ. 
If any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. He is not a new creation because he's working so hard at being a better person. But the Spirit of God transforms us. It changes us. The things that you used to love to do, you find yourself now you don't want to do them. The places you love, ah, 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 ah. the people you love to hang around with, all of a sudden you can't even sit with them for two minutes because there's something ah that would have changed within you. The Spirit of God the light haha, is illuminating and the darkness must disappear. Darkness must give way. Now that is why you can no longer find yourself in those circles. That is why you can no longer chill around those places. That is why you can't listen to that music. That is why you can't watch that TV show. That is why everything about you is beginning to change. You don't even recognize yourself anymore. And people will say that you have changed. Well, guess what? You have changed because God has changed you and he is changing you. He is redefining you. He is making you who you really are. He is introducing you to who you really are. My God, my God. We need to understand. We need to know what it is to be truly saved and to be truly born again. Because there's many of us. So, so many people are saying that they are born again. So, so many people say they are Christians. Everywhere you go, everyone is a Christian with their evil heart. They still have the, ah, the guts to say that they are born again. But God is saying, I don't know you. Go back to whomever you were serving. I, I, I don't know you. You can do good. You can do good. You can do good, but if it, the good is not from the Spirit of God, your intention, if it's not good, it means nothing to God. God says there are two ways. There are two gates. He says, enter through the narrow gate. He says, enter through the narrow gate. It's not an easy path to walk, and there will not be many of you on that path. So why is it that there are so many Christians today? Why is it there are so many people in the churches today when the directive that Jesus Christ, when the directive that God himself gave us is that there won't be many? On that road, there will not be many. On that path, there won't be many because it's a difficult, difficult road to walk. Then why are there many? Here's the definition. Here's the explanation for that. They appear as if they're many because they're on the wrong road. Ha! If you are hearing this message today, I want you to do some self-introspection and to take a true look at yourself. <clears throat> Don't lie to yourself. Tell yourself the truth. Take a look into your heart and say, but am I really, really born again? Have I truly accepted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? Have I accepted his spirit? Have I been baptized in his spirit? Have I really, really accepted this Lord and this Savior? Am I really being transformed? Or am I acting out on the outside? And on the inside, I still haven't changed. <clears throat> Do I still feel the same way where God should have changed my heart? These are the questions that we don't often ask ourselves. These are the questions that we should ask ourselves. Because life is both short and unpredictable. Now to make sure that we have saved ourselves and that we are on the safe path. And that we have secured our eternal home. We need to do self-introspection and we need to do it thoroughly so. We need to search ourselves on a daily basis and make sure that we have not lost the way. Where we have started to try to look good and holy in the eyes of people. Whereas in our hearts we are not being transformed. We have not been changed. If you are hearing this message today, then God is reaching out to you to say, I love you so much. 
but I don't want to see you end up in hell where you have lived a life in a church building. I don't want you to end up in hell. I don't want you to miss it. I don't want you to miss me. I don't want you to miss what I am trying to do in this season and in this time. I am sending off this message because I love you and I want to save you. It's not too late for you to come to me. It's not too late for you to truly repent and to truly be born again. I love you and I want you. I want to save your life. I want to change your life. I want to be the God of your life. I want to be the king of your life. Now, if you feel in your heart that this is me, if you feel in your heart that this is me, God, I know you are talking to me. I need, I need you in my life. I need you to come and change me. I need you to come and live within me. And I want your light to illuminate all the darkness out of my life. Then you are making the right choice. Because the word of God says in 1 John 1 verse 9, that if we confess our sins and if we repent, then he is faithful and just to forgive us and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And that is exactly what he will do. If you can confess your sins and you can repent, there is still an opportunity for you. It's not too late. It is not too late. The fact that you're still breathing is another day. It's another chance. It's another opportunity for you to become who God has truly created you to become. Now, I know a lot of times we lead people into salvation through a prayer. I don't believe in that. I believe that you in your own heart must believe that Jesus Christ is Lord. You must embrace and you must accept what he has done, the price that he prayed for you on that cross by sacrificing himself, by taking upon himself our sins so that he could give us that beautiful exchange, his own coat of righteousness. I pray <clears throat> that if you have taken this decision, then I encourage you to go to a faith based church because your mind is transformed through the reading of the word of God and also because you can be strengthened by the other fellow believers and the word of God does encourage us to go and fellowship with others. I am also here to serve as a guide, to serve as assistance. You can always inbox me. I do offer um, sessions, motivational sessions, counseling, <clears throat> excuse me, whatever it is that you will need. I do offer that and I am willing, readily willing and available to walk through this journey with you. One prayer is not going to be enough. You need to understand what it is that you are accepting. You need to understand what it is that you are getting into. This salvation walk is not an easy path. And I think a lot of people are lost because someone makes one prayer with you and that's that. I need you to understand that it's a journey. It's a lifelong journey. And at the beginning, you're going to need guidance. You're going to need assistance. You're going to need support, prayer, because it's not an easy path. Like I said, it's a narrow road with a narrow gate and not many people are on it. There's a lot of people who've got Christians, uh, the word Christ on their lips that say they're Christians, but in their hearts, they are not truly born again. They have not truly accepted Jesus Christ and something that they do, something that they have. And that's why so many people are perishing because they lack the knowledge, they lack the understanding. Um, please do share this message. There's so many people out there that are drowning in sin. Um, and some of them, they don't even realize it because they think, because I go to church, I'm born again. Because I do this, I'm born again. Because I do this for God, I'm born again. Um, we, we want to save as many souls as possible. My mom used to always say, we want to see hell empty and heaven full. Um, and we can only do that with your help. If you can help to spread and share this video, help um, us to share this word so that it can reach as many people as possible. Today, I was just here to talk about salvation. Once in a while, I like to tap back into that because it is the foundation of our faith. It is the foundation of everything. You cannot be a Christian if you have not been born again, if you have not been saved. And that is why we need to revisit the topic of true salvation. Today was a beautiful Salvation Sunday. Thank you so much for joining me. May you have a blessed, blessed day. May you be blessed as you go in. 
blessed as you go out and as you embark on this journey of being truly born again may god reveal to you the mysteries and the revelations of his word may he guide you and may he hold your hand so that on that fateful day you are not found wanting and that day can be any day it can be any time and i just want that we should all be ready i love you guys so much i will see you next week same time same place but a greater greater anointing i love you guys so much be blessed bye <laughs>